Hello everyone, welcome to our first session on agriculture and rural development for Nevada exam. Right, for today's session, we are going to start off uh, with clearing our basic concepts on the meaning of agriculture, the branches of agriculture, as well as we're going to continue with some of the history and milestones and also the revolutions in agriculture. Okay, so uh, this chapter is actually very important to clear out your basics. Okay, and now let's move on with our slides. Okay, here the first slide is about the meaning of agriculture. So whenever you are trying to learn or whenever you're trying to get into a new subject, you always check out for the meaning or the definition of that uh, subject, right? So here in the same way, we are going to talk about the meaning and definition of agriculture. But first, before that, we need to learn where this word agriculture first originated from, all right? So the word, the word agriculture is first originated from a Latin word, okay? So the... Two Latin words here used are vertis agar, which means the land, the field, or the soil, and you also have cultura, which means cultivation. So if you combine these two words, we get the uh, definition already, which means that cultivation of land or uh, cultivation in the fields or in the soil. Right? Another uh, point that I want you all to remember here is that whenever you find this T U R E T U R E in the last word of any in the last uh, the loss of any word, right? Then it, it is basically derived from a Latin word, right? But if you find any OG or a logi, right? GY especially, then it is derived from the Greek language. Or it has of the Greek origin. Example for this OG would be a homology, right? So we'll come into the whole definition of homology later, but then this homology is the study of fruits. All right, and another example that I would give, uh, sorry, another fruit, another example that I would like to give here is polyculture. All right, since it has T U R E at last, it is derived from a Latin word, and polyculture is based on study of vegetables or fruits or ornamentals, etc. And we'll come into that later. All right, so this is how you can remember from where these words are derived from, so that it'll be much more easier for you all to remember in the exam as well. Right. Um, Right now, next, let's go to another side. Um, agriculture is not just about farming, right? Uh, it is actually much more than that. So agriculture, it involves the cultivation and production of food grains or any food and rearing or production of livestock for the consumption of human or to, uh, to meet the needs of humans, all right? So that is what the whole agriculture is about. So agriculture is also related to an art, Right? It's also related to art, it's also related to science, and it's also related to business. And now let's look into why it is related to art. Since when you uh, think of an art, you always think about this. Uh, skills that um, um, an artist would need, right? In the same way for agriculture, um, to, to do all these operations and activities, you need to be uh, skilled or need all the skills to do all these activities. And that's why agriculture is an art. The second point here is why is it a science? Right. So um, in agriculture, there's a lot of use of the scientific knowledge and technologies are also used and researched upon. And these are implemented at the ground level on the field. Right. In that way, um, agriculture is a science. So the example I would give here is that utilization of these technologies, which are developed. Right. For example, like in crop breeding, right? crop breeding, production techniques. We also have crop protection. All right, and we also have some economics, which are mainly for increasing the um, productivity or the yields, or it can be um, resistant towards any pests or any diseases. And the last one here is business. Why is it a business? So now when we think about business, we only think about profits, right? So in the same way, agriculture also putting the less input and putting all the um, natural resources or the capital that you have uh, and in a more manageable way and then you provide or you give out this best net return or the best net profit from it. So basically it aims at maximizing maximum net return through the proper management of the land, the labor, the water, right? As well as they, they also employ the science of production of the food and feed, fiber and fuel. And we mostly go for this commercialized cultivation. And that's why it is called as business as well. And now let's move on to another slide. Right, now let's 
coming coming to the scope and importance of agriculture. So when we think about agriculture, it's not just about growing plants and just consuming for human needs. Okay, so it also has a large impact. Uh, the first uh, impact especially on an um, Indian agriculture impact does it have or its significance it has is that it provides employment, all right? Uh, providing employment is one of the major drive force of agriculture as it provides for more than 50% of the country's workforce, all right? And uh, not only that is uh, this uh, agriculture sector, it also contributes as the third or it's, it's ranked as third uh, it's on contribution to the Indus gross domestic product, right? The first one being the uh, service sector, the second one is industrial, and the third one is the agriculture sector. So now you get to know why the government is trying to push forward with doubling of the farmer's income by 2022, right? Okay, uh, the second point here I want to stress is on the country's exports, okay? Uh, since uh, there is a huge production, agriculture production, India is uh, um, agriculture country, okay? So it has a huge potential in the export as well. Uh, and that's why this India, their export from India has reached about 28.93 billion in the financial year of 2020, all right? And this is important, guys. So try to remember this point, okay? Another point here is that this total agriculture export, uh, they account for about 2% of the total world trade, agricultural trade, all right? And this is estimated to be around 1.37 uh, trillion. And um, that's why the demand, the, uh, that's why uh, of this agriculture export policy also, they aim at uh, increasing the India's agriculture export to about 60 billion. US dollars by 2022, all right? So this is very important, okay? These two points, I try to remember that. Another point that I want to stress here is also that uh, not only it does not just involve uh, cultivating of the food grains or not just uh, production of livestock, it also involves in the fish uh, industries as well, right? So India is the top most in um, fish production as well. And so that's the reason why this government is, uh, Indian government is also planning to aim uh, to raise the fishery export as well by rupees 1 lakh crore, right? By the year of 2024 to 25. All right. And uh, if I ask you guys, what are the major um, a major um, export destination of our agriculture commodities? The first one would be your USA. All right. And we also have Saudi Arabia. And we have Iran as well. All right. And the major exporting commodities from India would be your uh, basmati rice, right? India is famous for basmati rice, and that's the number one. We also have buffalo meat, and we have spices. India is very for, famous for spices, so these are the top three commodities which are very, uh, which are uh, in the top in the export industry from agriculture goods. All right, so I hope this is clear. Now, now let's move on to another slide. Um, here in this slide, I've just given uh, the importance of Indian agriculture in the country, uh, in the world economy, right? So, uh, first one here is that India is the largest producer of spices, okay? It's also the largest producer of pulses, milk, tea, cashew, as well as jute, okay? And it is the second largest producer of wheat, rice, fruits, and vegetables, sugarcane, cotton, and oil seeds. So all these things uh, are due to the Green Revolution or all the other revolutions which had occurred in the past, right? Because of that, these are all the significance of the, um, or the consequences, and that's how India has become the largest producer in all of these. Um, another point here is that this India is also the largest, ar largest arable land resources in the world. And it is one of the largest manufacturing of farm equipment, such as the tractors, harvesters, and tillers, right? And it accounts for nearly about one third of the overall tractor production. Um, the second most point here is that it is currently the world's largest fish producing country and the number two in aquaculture, okay, as well as in the inland capture 
uh, fisheries. I'm not going to uh, talk in detail about these terms right now. As we move forward with the course, we will try to understand what is aquaculture and what is inland capture fisheries are. Uh, but for now, it is these are all related to fisheries, okay? Which is uh, production and rearing or breeding of uh, fishes, right? So these are some of the importance and scope of importance of agriculture in India and India's contribution in agriculture towards the world economy. Right now, uh, coming to the branches of agriculture, think of agriculture as an umbrella or a big sector. All right, under this big sector, it's not it's not it does not only involve production of crops only. It also involves product and um, production or rearing of livestock, of fishes, of spices, um, as well as uh, there are also allied activities. Right, so in that way, we divide this agriculture into three major categories. The first one is crop production, okay? Okay, and the second one is animal management. And the third one we have is the allied sectors. Right, now coming to the first one, we have crop production. Under crop production, we have agronomy, we have horticulture, and we have forestry. Okay, so agronomy, remember, it deals with the cultivation and production of food crops, or fiber crops, or oilseed crops, or any fodder crops as well, which are more uh, produced in a more commercialized way. All right, so this is what agronomy is. And now coming to horticulture, horticulture deals with the cultivation of the vegetables, of fruits, ornamentals, which is flowers, right? And also spices and plantation crops, as well as some of the uh, planting, plantation crops and beverages will come along the way, right? So uh, under that, also we have different branches, smaller, smaller branches. I'll tell you guys in, later on, right? Um, we also have forestry. So forestry it uh, deals with the large scale plantation of these perennial trees and cultivating them and uh, um, uh, cultivating them for the uh, for the wood, timber, and rubber. Right. So this can be also used for, as a raw as a raw materials in the industries as well. So this is uh, what forestry is. Now we have animal management. Under animal management, we first one is animal husbandry. As the name suggests, animal husbandry, it uh, deals uh, with the rearing and breeding of animals. All right, so uh, why do we use animals? It can be for food, for milk, for dairy products, right? We can also use them for power, manpower for power, as well as for as a fertilizer or as a manure, okay? Uh, the, th the second one here is fisheries, right? So the first one is for animals. The second one is for fishes, as the name suggests. So in the same way, it is also cultivation, or, sorry, it's also rearing and breeding of fishes, all right? Uh, it, it's not only... Um, it's not only a confined to fishes, it's, it can also be for prawns, for shrimps, for oysters, and other sea species as well. All right, so this is another branches of agriculture. And now moving to the allied sector of agriculture. Uh, basically, we have two allied sectors, okay, major ones. Uh, the first one is agriculture engineering. So when we're talking about agriculture engineering, um, it deals with the study or of farm mechanization, right? So we need all these machines and everything to uh, to do or conduct our regular day to day operations in agriculture fields. Suppose if you're growing uh, rice in a huge uh, land, right, which is not possible through manpower. So these can be compensated by using these machines like tractors, power tillers, um, etc. Right. So all these are produced by these agriculture engineers or these agriculture engineering deals with all these farm mechanization. Okay, and now the last one here we have is home science, right? So home science basically deals or it's a study of nutrition, of food and food management, uh, which will give a value addition to all the produce that you have been produced uh, through this horticulture by agronomists or any of those food crops. Uh, so 
using those and studying about this nutritional value of these food and preparing a better um, plan, right? So these food science is basically a study of this nutrition that these food uh, that we grew provides, all right? So this is some, these are the seven major branches under agriculture, all right? But don't, uh, there are also small sectors or small, smaller branches under agriculture, like you, they might ask you questions on um, agriculture, okay? So agriculture is the study or rearing of bees, okay? And we also have floriculture, Floriculture deals with flowers. Foliary culture deals with vegetables. Pomology deals with fruits. And you might have come across the word sericulture. Is basically the cultivation of sulfur, right? And these are some of the uh, small, small branches, which is very important for you all to remember, okay? So these are some small branches, and but the major branches that we have are seven branches, and under the seven branches, we also have these smaller uh, versions of branches of agriculture. Right, I hope that is clear. That's all for today's session. We are going to continue with uh, the history and in the milestone as well as some of the revolutions of agriculture in the next uh, chapter or in the next session. Thank you.